the 80s band R.E.M. was right about one thing. It is the end of the world. But it won't be as they know it, and they won't feel fine. Here comes the book of Revelation. Hey guys, welcome to Scripture in 6 Minutes. If you're committed to reading God's Word, we're committed to helping you understand it. Now in this episode, we're wading through the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. So let's start with a quote from Captain Obvious, shall we? Revelation is different. You don't say. <laughs> well, that's because it's largely comprised of apocalyptic literature, uh, writing that's really rich in symbols and imagery and, and revolves around delightful themes of judgment and global disaster and a cataclysmic end to all life and time as we know it on Earth. <laughs> now, along with like a few other select passages in the Bible, Revelation forms a major portion of our eschatology, which is just a fancy way of saying our study of the end times, okay? Now, as you might imagine, this opens the book of Revelation up to wildly different interpretation possibilities, okay? But I want to go on the record and say that anyone who disagrees with a single detail of my interpretation is not only wrong, but should be condemned as a heretic as well, okay? Um, I'm kidding, of course. Um, I'm not really going to be offering much in the way of interpretation in this video. We just don't have the time. I simply want to highlight like, the unmistakable message that Revelation offers to very different groups of people. Okay? First, for the unrepentant sinner, Revelation declares that God's wrath will soon be poured out on their rampant unbelief and, and their willful disobedience. Right? But for the second group of people, those faithful disciples of Jesus, and Revelation promises the reward of victory. Like we win because Jesus has already won. Now speaking of faithful disciples, we know that Revelation was written by Jesus' disciple John, and probably when he was quite old as well. We even know where John wrote the book of Revelation. He wrote it from the island of Patmos. John the Elder, um, he'd been exiled to this small island off the coast of what's now modern-day Turkey because of his allegiance to Jesus. Now John tells us in chapter 1 that Jesus makes radiant appearance to him on the island of Patmos and commands him to write there for the things that you have seen, those that are, and those that are to take place after this. And so that's what John does. He writes down what Jesus reveals to him, hence the name of the book. Now, following chapters 2 and 3, in which Jesus dictates individual letters to seven different churches, again, that are located in modern-day Turkey, things take a celestial turn in chapter 4. Um, John is invited up to heaven not only to see what goes on around the throne of God, but also to get an exclusive vantage point to what's going to take place on the earth in the future. And from chapters 5 through the end of chapter 20, John records the wrath of God that will be showered upon the earth and its inhabitants. Now, I want to be crystal clear about something, okay? We're talking wrath, not punishment. And there's a distinct difference between the two. Punishment is meant for correction, but wrath, it's, deserved, it's reserved for destruction. Okay, I mean, in, in Revelation, God's not putting people in time out. He's declaring that time's up. Okay? So every disaster that you can think of, and many more that you could never dream of if you tried, they're unleashed against unrepentant sinners. Talking famine, uh, war, natural disasters, meteorological events that cripple life on earth, uh, the unbridled evil of Satan and his henchmen. I mean, death takes place on an unprecedented scale, never before witnessed um, in our species history. And it all culminates in a scene known as the Battle of Armageddon, where God finally and eternally vanquishes all those who've chosen their will over His. Now, these are the chapters that capture everyone's attention, of course, and rightly so. I mean, John describes God's wrath in shocking terms that only escalate as events continue to unfold. But the truly heartbreaking reality is this. The people who are suffering know that it's because God is judging their sin. But instead of turning their lives over to God, we're told several times that they refuse to repent in spite of their ensuing destruction. Now, as sad as that is, their destruction is complete. In chapter 20, with every foe vanquished, God pronounces judgment upon his enemies and casts them into the lake of fire, 
where they will be separated from him for all of eternity. There is no tragedy greater than this. But speaking of eternity, in chapters 21 and 22, um, the, the, John describes the glorious fate that is in store for all of those faithful disciples of Jesus who trusted him for forgiveness of their sin. John talks about a new heaven and a new earth. He talks about us dwelling with God forever, face to face. And he closes the book by recording a line that Jesus repeats three times in a matter of just a few short verses. I am coming soon. So with that in mind, let me offer you just a few suggestions as you read the book of Revelation for yourself. First, and don't get bogged down in trying to interpret every single minute detail in this book. After all, you know, highly trained theologians have been debating the ins and outs of the book of Revelation for about 1900 years now, okay? And besides, that's not even the point, which leads me to my second suggestion. Focus on the broad strokes of what God is communicating. And that's this, is that Jesus is coming back soon and he's bringing with him two things, wrath for his enemies and reward for his disciples. So make sure you're in the right group, okay? And finally, I'd say this, man, read Revelation and seize hope for the future. No matter what happens, no matter what takes place, we know how the story ends because we've literally read the end of the story. We win because Jesus has already won. And that, my friends, that warrants a hallelujah, okay? The book of Revelation, it wasn't written to scare us. It was written to prepare us. So read the book of Revelation like you've read every other book in the Bible that we've covered in our Scripture in Six Minutes series. And let God's Word do what it does best. Change your life.